You can only hide the real you but for so long. Sooner or later, your representative has to fall back and the real you is gonna come forward front and center and the whole world's gonna know who you really are. Let's get into it. What up, y'all? I'm Christopher Markland, author of the books Desperately Seeking Exclusivity, Desperately Seeking Pleasure, and my third book, Desperately Seeking Clarity, will be released soon. Welcome to my review of episode eight of season four, Ready to Love. So this week, one of the fellas is going to be sent home. All right. So we know that the guys that are left are going to be AJ, David, Jason, Joel, Ron, or Chris. One of them is going to be eliminated and get sent home this week. This week, I want you to introduce the men to your exes. This week, Tommy wants the ladies to introduce the men to their exes. Y'all, I am not a fan of this at all all our exes are a representative a representation of our past who we were in the past and quite honestly our exes helped to make us the you know at the moment who we were so we pretty much the person that you're with kind of dictated to a certain extent who you were at the time i'm always talking about um, therapy so that way you can be the best version of yourself today your ex shows who you were then and all they know is who you were then they know how you moved back then they know you know how you carried yourself back then i get it we are creatures of habit however how can you grow and improve if you then have to be transported back to who you were in the past i'm not a fan of this at all watch how your guy acts in this situation that's important it's gonna tell you a lot are they jealous hmm I also want you to use this moment to get your ex's perspective on your new relationship, okay? Because they know you. They knew who you were. Both of those words, knew and were, represent past tense. And if the, the ex is your ex for a reason, that's the relationship that happened in the past. And for Tommy to say, hey, you know, bring your ex in and ask the new dude and see if he's the jealous type. No, man, no. You do not bring in the old situation into your new for a couple of reasons. The first one is this. Steve Harvey, which is nephew Tommy's uncle, that's why we call him nephew Tommy. But Steve Harvey told a story once on his on his morning show about how much he wanted a new car. The thing is though, he already had a car, but it was an old beat up junker of a car that was sitting in the driveway, just you know, sitting there taking up space, dripping oil everywhere, whatever. It wasn't moving, there wasn't anything to it, but he kept saying, I want a new car, I want a new car. His mother kept telling him every time she heard him say that, like, you already got a car. And he's like, I want a new car. She's like, you already got a car. It wasn't until he took the steps to get rid of the old beat down car in his driveway that he opened up the space for a new car to be parked. That's what it's like. That's what it is with a new relationship. OK, it's a new relationship, meaning you need to start new. You need to start fresh. Another reason why I'm not a fan of having this old the, the ex or the old relationship come in and start, you know, vet the new guy. Where does it stop? So is the, the, the ex going to come and be like, hey, dog, she likes it when you blow in her ear. Hey, man, you might want to kiss her on the neck because she like that. Where do you draw the line? You know what I'm saying? I, I and I'm I know it's hyperbole. I get it, but your old relationship needs to stay in the past. That's your ex. Y'all are done, dead it. Do y'all still have decent relationships with your ex? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm about to find out. <laughs> I can tell this gonna be one hell of a conversation. <laughs> I'm, I'm still on the fence with this one. I, I get it. With social media, you're able to follow your exes, you know, and especially if things ended amicably, you know. Man, my ex-wife, yeah, I ain't following her. We done blocked each other. But anyway, that's kind of personal. <laughs> anyway, I, I understand, you know, that you can follow your exes. You can keep up with their lives and see where they are. And, you know, it's a friendly relationship. You know, I'm not trying to get in their business. They ain't trying to get in mine. But, you know, we kind of see how the other person is moving. However, I'm not going to reach out to one of my exes and be like, hey, hey, can you ask your husband if you can come on a on a date with me and see this new person? No, come on. Look at think about how awkward that is. I get it. It's a reality show. I get it that they're trying to entertain us. I get it. However, I just don't like I said, this is why I just don't like this whole bring your ex in to talk. No, thank you for coming to meet me today. Well, I think I've met somebody that I connect with. You did. Maybe you can kind of give me some insight on him and maybe you can give him some insight when it comes to me. 
I'll do it. This is going to be interesting. Vernicia's up first, and with her is her ex, David. Man, not that David, another David. <laughs> anyway, um, off the rip, y'all, I don't like this. This, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you slice it, this is going to be an ambush for Joel because he doesn't know what he's walking into. Just like I said, I don't like, I didn't like the double dates that they did in the past where one person showed up and then all of a sudden another person walked in and they're like, oh, I didn't know that such and such was going to be here. I don't like where a situation where I'm there and all of a sudden another person walks in and I don't have any warning. That, that to me is, is, to be honest, it's discourteous at best. And in these particular situations, when you're dealing with men, it's dangerous at worst. This is not my first rodeo with dealing with an ex meeting a current or a potential current mate. I wasn't nervous, but I was a little excited to see how David would take to Joel. If he gets Joel the way that I get him and think that Joel would be a good fit for me. If you have kids like Renisha does, it makes sense, all right? If you're co-parenting with somebody else, your ex-husband, ex-wife, whatever the case may be, it makes sense that that person who has, you know, a responsibility to those children just as much as you do, meets the person that you're bringing around your kids. So it makes sense in that case. Now, they don't have the right to vet that person or to grant their blessing as if, yes, you may now date that person. No, they ain't got no right for that. Your personal life is your personal life. But when it comes to how you raise your kids, when it comes to who you have around your kids, they definitely have say so in that as far as, hey, there's something about that person I don't like, just like you have the same thing, you know, towards them. Hey, I don't particularly care for that person around my kids. I mean, as long as you got valid reasons. Oh, you know, we got that baby mama, baby daddy drama. I'm not talking about none of that, you know, toxic mess, for lack of a better word. I'm talking about real reasons that responsible reasons when it comes to co-parenting co and raising your children. I invited my ex to meet Ron. The thing with Ron is he has said the right things, he's done the right things, and he made me first choice, which I absolutely love because it's something that I haven't had in my previous relationships. Alexis wants to be chosen. She wants to be number one. She has been talking about that even before this episode. Go all the way back to, I want to say it's episode one or two um, at the beginning of this season. <clears throat> one of the things that she talked about was that you know, her ex-husband, who was a, um, a minister, a reverend, he would get, she would get upset with him because if one of his parishioners called in the middle of the night or whatever, she, he would get up to go and take care of them, to go take care of his flock. For her, the, him paying that other person attention made that person who was calling number one. That person's needs were put in front of her own, or at least that's how I'm reading this, because she is constantly wanting to be chosen. She wants Ron um, or later on AJ to say, hey, you are the one. And that to me is just not healthy behavior as far as I can read it. it it's something that she's been saying throughout the episode. It's like, who's your number one? Who's your number one? Don't forget, I'm your number one, as opposed to saying, hey, you know, making it just clear that she is the best person for you to be with, for any one of the men to be with. If an argument was to jump off, how would you handle it? I argue kind of logically, like I argue like a, like a guy. In her emotions, she still needs to know you care. No, I you get it, and I, I, I gotta work on that myself. Yeah. Words of affirmation hasn't been my strong suit in the past, so. Before I get into it, let me say this. Alexis's house, you can tell that's her house. You can tell that's her home. You can tell people actually live there. You got pictures on the wall. You got, you know, um, stuff on the refrigerator. You can tell that that is a home that real people live in. Now, what I, I don't necessarily like about, you know, this whole meet the ex or even like last week where you meet the friends or you meet the family, I don't like watching people get interrogated by somebody that they don't know. I, I understand that this is within the con concept of this show and you know it's it's a production I, I really i fully understand that it's still annoying to see also let me say this i think that ron said that um alexis's language is words of affirmation i don't think so personally i think that her uh no excuse me her love language is that of quality time meaning if you're spending time with her you're with your number one and Anything that detracts from that, if you are spending, like for instance, last week when she was uh, the uh, battles with, was with her and Chrysanthemum, if he was spending time with Chrysanthemum, or if he was talking to her or giving her any attention, if he was spending any type of quality time with her, then that means that that was his number one, and that's a problem for her. I'm about to ask that man a real question. What's the real question? Don't be scared, nah. 
I ain't scared. Is she clingy? No. All right, you know what I'm saying? That's what I want. That, that wasn't how I was it. Joel asked a question about Vernicia being clingy, and Lord knows I am glad he did because I don't know where that whole clingy thing came from. Um, last, it was in the last episode that you know he, she she said that she was territorial, and in some kind of way that morphed into her being clingy. So I am so glad that you know he he's addressing that because I call BS when this whole thing came about in the last episode and I called it in my review, I was like, yo, this is some BS. I don't know what, where this whole clingy thing is coming from. So I am glad that it's being addressed right now. Are you a real religious man? Yeah. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess felt your religion coming off you. I mean, that's why I asked you the question. <clears throat> religion and politics. Those are two things that they always say hey, you don't talk about in public settings and you definitely don't want to mock or belittle or in any way come at them because those are things that people hold true, hold dear and personal to them. OK, now I've always felt that it's not up to me to understand when it comes to religion. It's not up to me to understand why you believe the way you do or why your walk is what it is, whether you're Muslim, Christian or any other religion. It's not up to me to be like, well, why do you do that? That's not my place. All, what is my place, what is up to me is to respect what it is that you believe, to respect your walk. Now, if it doesn't necessarily align with me, cool. I'm not going to denigrate. I'm not going to mock. I'm not going to do any of those things because it doesn't align with my personal beliefs. And that right there, I think, is, is one of the issues that I have with how Ron is kind of flippantly talking about um, Alexis and her religious beliefs. You know what? But I'm big on communication. And what made you bring that up, girl? Because, you know, you know me and you, you've been like... You want to give me an example? <laughs> I can. This is what frustrates me the most about the whole Joel clingy territorial thing. He, he himself said in the last episode that the whole thing started because um, of a phone call that went left. Now, that happens, fine. You chalk it up to a miscommunication, you keep it moving, no, no, no harm, no foul. However, what Joel did instead was he, he he puts it out in front of his friends that, hey, Renisha's territorial. That then turns into her being clingy. Then he then Joel then takes it to the uh, felt to the lounge with the guys and puts out there that, yeah, you know, Renisha, she kind of clingy. You know, she's kind of territorial. And now, once again, her name's being pretty much drugged down. And speaking of names being drug, drugged down, he brings Kyra's name into the situation all because of a miscommunication on a phone call instead of taking ownership as far as what exactly happened. That right there is a problem that I have. Like I said, miscommunications happen all day. But when you start, when you take it and then run with it like that, now all of these people, the, his friends now have this image of Vernicia. All the fellas now have this Im image of Vernicia. Uh, Vernicia. Kyra is now in the mix because of this whole thing. That's not fair to none of those people involved. We, we plan to meet. Right. And then um, after he was done doing what he was doing, I told him, hey, just call me when you're finished. Right. He didn't call. Go Three ahead. hours passed. I said, hey, you still doing whatever? We were waiting to go eat. And I when you're a single man, you're used to moving at your own pace, doing your own thing when you feel like doing it because you're single. You don't have anybody that you're accountable to. Joel obviously has been single for a while from what he said, you know, in his introductions or whatever. So now, you know, he's used to, hey, if he wants to return a phone call, he will. If he doesn't, so be it. That's just been his normal. However, because he's now dealing with Renisha, who has her own level of expectations and what she wants, what she is demanding of him, He's not used to that. So, of course, there's going to be an adjustment period. And that's where miscommunication can come in. If it's miscommunication, you come together, figure out what happened, and then you keep moving. Don't just say, oh, man, she's calling me too much. All right, she's clingy. She's territorial. No, nah, don't do that. He said, if I didn't call you, that means plans had changed. Something came up. Right. But he didn't communicate. I'm, am I just supposed to know that? Well, no. He felt like I should just automatically know that the plans had shifted because he didn't call me. I'm like, no, I don't read mine. I need you to communicate with me. So now that we get to the bottom of what the whole of how this whole clingy thing came out, it really and truly turns out that Joel didn't like the fact that Vernicia was holding him accountable to do what he said he was going to do. Hey, when you finish doing whatever you're doing, give me a call. Three hours passed by. He didn't do that. So Vernicia's calling him like, yo, what's happening? Where are you at? We're supposed to be doing this. 
And now don't get me wrong. We weren't privy to their phone call. And, you know, a lot of times it's not what you say, but how you say it. And she herself said that she was hangry, meaning she was hungry and angry. So you never know what her tone may have been and be like, hey, where you at? You know, that kind of thing. I get it. Stuff could have happened that we obviously don't know. However, based on what we do know is that as Renisha was re recalling the, the, or the events that led up to all of this, his body language and wasn't that of, oh, he wasn't, you know, there wasn't anything where he was pushing back on the narrative that she was telling. So we kind of can, you know, put two and two together that what she's saying and how she's saying things went down actually went down in that way. All I know is this, based on everything that, that she said, how he's reacting to it, the whole situation is that he didn't like the fact that she was holding him accountable to do what he said he was going to do. And then because of that, he got in his feelings and now she's she's clingy and let me go holla at Kyra because my feelings hurt. David understood both sides and I'm happy that he kind of like was a neutral ground and just didn't just take her side. You see, it's good to have people like that. D. Man, it was a pleasure, dog. Yeah, same here. And I ain't gonna get you That's coming right, here man. to help me with this yip. Yeah. He, 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 he can't be off me. Hey, no, he helped me. Overall, that was a really good setting for all three of us. I will say this though. Joel has been consistent from jump the minute he met her as far as how he felt about Vernicia and the fact that they are, you know, developing something together. I will give grace because, like I said, this dude's been used to, you know, been moving as a single man or, you know, he may date here or there. But from what we've been gathering from the information that we have on the show, that he's used to moving as a single man. Now there's somebody in his life. So there's going to be a period of adjustment. There's going to be miscommunication. There are going to be issues. So once again, you got to, I'm, I'm giving grace when it comes to that. If there are issues of miscommunication, they got to talk it out. And more importantly, he has to take the lead and talk it out, especially if he's the one, you know, mis misunderstanding what she's saying and then say, yo, this, I don't get what you're talking about, baby. You know, you heard me, let her know. Like, <laughs> That was egregious. <laughs> anyway, that that is what they have to do in order to move forward. <laughs> is it important to me that the man I'm with has faith and he believes? Yes, because the bottom line is if you're yoked up with me, there's going to be influence of me on your life. That's kind of where we differ at. She's more of a spiritual, put it in the air, you know, I'll pray on it type of person. And I'm total opposite. I'm not going to pray on it. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> Y'all, I don't claim to be the most ardent Christian out there, so correct me if I'm wrong. The text doesn't say for you to be yoked up with somebody, but what it does say is for you not to be unequally yoked to unbelievers. Ron is not only sending red flags, but this dude is sending them up the pole and saluting them on the way up. And for whatever reason, Alexis is not respecting those red flags that he is sending her. I had to really, in that moment, consider that. Like, is this really the man for me? When it comes to Ron, I really don't know what decision I'm going to make. Yeah, I have some talking to do, you know, as far as for the future. When somebody tells you who they are, believe them. When it comes to intentional dating, you have to make sure that the person that you are interested in, that you have beliefs that align with each other, whether it's your faith, whether it's your, you know, how you raise children, whatever the case may be. And especially when you get into your late thirties and you're looking for a spouse, you don't have time to waste hoping that that person comes around and, you know, well, maybe if we stay together long enough, his beliefs may align with mine. There are times that you have to push that car out the driveway in order to make room for the right car to be parked there. So I have a friend that owns a nail bar. And I thought it would be cool to invite a few of the ladies that were available to come and get a little pampering. Well, Vernicia did say that she was territorial. It's kind of funny, right, that the only person, and I mean the only woman that's not there, is the same woman that shared a kiss with uh, Joelle. Now, it may have been a kiss on the cheek. It don't really matter. All that, all I know is that she's not there. Now, we know that Vernicia has a pretty good memory because when she was recalling the uh, conversation with Joelle, she was citing chapter and verse as far as what happened every step of the way. So we know that Vernicia's memory is pretty good, and I believe that she didn't forget about that kiss. So because of that, Amber wasn't there, but Hey, as she said, all of the women that were available made it. Right. <laughs> no. Okay, well, I'm 
I'm ready to tell you about my man. I mean, okay, fine. so probably some rum. Me about your complexion. A strawberry mojito. <laughs> Y'all, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But when she said that, hey, he has the same complexion as you, I had to stop because I'm like, which one of them dudes is gold? Or is it bronze? I don't know. Y'all, I don't know nothing about these makeup trends. So to me, old girl looks the the the, the bartender, she looks to be like golden. Like I said, I don't know these makeup trends. Y'all educate me in the comment section, but I don't know any of them dudes that are gold colored. So y'all let me know something. Clarence is a guy that just spot BS and takes no mess. We dated, but we saw that we were better off friends. And so he's almost like a big brother. I'm happy that you came because I want to talk to you about uh, this guy. I like the fact that Liz has friends like Clarence who can come in there for her. Um, not every date, not every relationship even leads to marriage or is a love connection. Sometimes you meet someone, things just don't work out, and they stay in your life for a reason. We need friends because, you know, whether it's male or female, we need those people to add perspective to our lives, to give us feedback, and just to be friends. Somebody you call, talk to, whatever the case may be. I'm glad that Clarence, you know, she calls him her, you know, a brother. So I'm glad that he showed up to do that. Like I said, having different people in your life give you, gives you different perspectives, get, allows you to bounce ideas off of them to get some feedback so that, especially in dating, so that way you can move forward knowing that you have as much information and, and you know, objectively as possible. The date and everything was fine, but off camera, he kind of switched up on me. So when I'm- Really? Yeah. What really hurt me and what really shocked me was off camera, David asked me what I did that day in front of his friends. We can talk about the fuckery that is David all day. I Like we've talked about, we know that this is a broken man due to the past relationships, both with his parents and with, I think he was married twice before and the infidelity that happened and we get it. He's a broken man. Let's talk about the two ladies who have discussed issues with the men that they are, you know, are interested in, and they talk about red flags. Y'all, a red flag means stop. It means stop. It means if there's an issue and something comes up that's like, yo, there's a problem, you stop and talk about it. You don't just keep moving forward. Liz has talked about the red flags with David. Um, what's her name? Alexis. She she's experiencing red flags when it comes to Ron, and even Joelle experienced a red flag when it came to Vernicia. If you do have that issue and there is a red flag, like I said, you stop. OK, and then you talk about it because here's the thing. All of these people have been single for X, X amount of time. They're used to moving a certain way. And now that there's a different person in front of them, obviously, you're going to have communication if issues. Obviously, there may even be some compatibility issues, because at the end of the day, what may be a six to them could also be a red flag of a nine to you. The only way that, that you can sort that out is to have a conversation, communicate your issues as to why you think that this is this while they commu communicate to you while they think that is that. Once you're able to sort that out, you'll either know whether you're going to stick around because, hey, I see that this is an issue like what happened. Um, this is something that we can work through, like what happened with Joelle and Venetia. Or you can be like, you know what? This ain't what I want. And you can get the hell up out of there and run away from a, a, a situation before it goes from bad to worse. And I told him, you know, I got a chance to meet Jason's friends. And he looked at me, he was like, oh, did you kiss Jason again? In front of his friends. I was embarrassed because I'm sitting up here like, why would you do me like that? Mm. I share that to, in confidence. So to me, that's a red flag. Couple of things. Traditionally speaking, a man's job is to secure and protect. It's like for me, like when I joined the army, I swore to uh, secure and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The same thing applies to me now in my, my relation as in my situation as a husband. I am going to protect my house from all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign meaning outside the house, domestic meaning inside, meaning the stuff that I do to, that's going to cause an issue between me and me and my wife. That is what traditionally a man is supposed to do. The other thing is this. This is why I've, I've been saying it a couple of times. It is dangerous. OK, now you have Clarence. He came there in the role of, um, say, Liz's big brother. 
He only heard Liz's side of the situation and understandably so was bothered by the things that Liz was relaying to him. This is what I mean when it is dangerous because there's another TV show back in the day where they thrived on ambushing people and it got into fights and all this other stuff. Remember this dude right here? That's what I'm talking about. So, you know, at the end of the day, you cannot control how two men handle things. There's another reality show that just ended. I think they did their reunion show a couple of days ago. Um, and one of the one of the dudes on the show, he was volatile as hell. In fact, they, they set up a situation where he's like, hey, well, come on out and talk to your pastor, whatever the hell his name is. And old boy was ready to throw them things in a suit. So it, you cannot control how men react. And if you if you want to set something up, I get it. It's great for TV. It's entertaining. But if you put two dudes in a situation, all it takes is a spark and that thing's going to pop off something serious. That's why it's dangerous. I want a man that I can feel safe with, be vulnerable around and share things with, that when I share something intimate with you, you're gonna protect that. That's why I really want you here because I need to see like, what do you feel? I don't, I don't like that already. Again, it makes for great TV. It's very entertaining. You know, they have the perfect mood music that sets the mood, you know, gets the tension up like, ah, you know something's about to happen. That's great. Just love it, good TV. However, this is one of those situations that as a man, when you walk into a room, OK, the first thing we do is we look around and see who all's in the room. We we see, OK, you know, we do a friend foe analysis. We do, you know, a cool lame analysis. All right. That's a cool character. Yeah, they do lame as hell. We, we do all of those things in the blink of an eye. We get all of that information just based on where people are sitting, just based on, you know, whose whose attention people are focused on. It's a lot of stuff that happens the minute we walk into a room. I can't explain it, but it just happens. So this is one of those things where, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting. We get it. But even David, the, when he walked in, he was like, oh, OK, what's going on here? He feels it because it's like he sees this dude. And we already know that David is a is a controlling man. He wants to know everything. He wants to control all the situations, especially when it comes to Liz. We've got we've gotten that from him in, in how he moves. So here it is, the woman that he has his attention on is sitting across from another dude. And you can tell Clarence is, you can tell this cat ain't, you know, he's that dude. So David feels all of that. So he's walking into that situation blind. This is a, <laughs> in, this is a very interesting twist, right? Bro, yes, it ain't like every day you can say you get to meet your right. interest ex. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, but sure. at the same time, I have some questions. Okay. So and, uh, then it's not a pleasure anymore or? I like to get to the bottom of things. For sure. All enemies, foreign and domestic. Like it or not, Liz just set up a situation where Clarence is a foreign threat to their relationship. They're meaning uh, Liz and David. Think about it. David and Liz have a situation. We can go all day about how, you know, how David has been moving, how reckless he is, whatever the case may be. But the bottom line is at this point, at this juncture, David and Liz are essentially together. Clarence is a foreign threat to whatever the hell it is that David and Liz have. And Liz introduced that threat from David's perspective. Now, you know, I, I, I've said it before. You cannot control how men react or you can't control anybody's re reaction. If you put something out there, how somebody reacts to it, whether you agree or disagree with their reaction is how they react to it. You put it out there. Their reaction is their own. And it happens no matter how good intentioned you may be. You even see uh, at the beginning where Liz is rubbing David's back to try and ease the tension. But it's two men. I'm sorry. You can rub his back all day. You could be giving him the sweetest massage. At the end of the day, if this if this man is amped up at another man, ain't nothing she can do about it, nor can she control what happens next. Like I just talked about on the other reality show that that just um did their, that just closed that just ended their season. One of those dudes, Chris, he was on that show. They ambushed him and he was like, yo, he was ready to throw them things. Or at least he was talking like he was, but that's another. Anyway, so at, you cannot control what happens. You set these situations in motions, they can go left real quick. Regardless of them cameras being there, we've seen them before. People will do some stupid stuff. And Liz, whether she meant it or not, she created a potentially dangerous situ uh, situation. I was a little taken back by this ex. 
My man came out the gate swinging. I got a question just to set the tone and the understanding of the relationship. Last time that there was any level of intimacy with y'all. Not gonna lie, I ain't got no problem with David's question. I walk in and I see you and her, y'all sitting across from each other. I see drinks half finished. That means y'all have been here for a while. Y'all been talking. And there's a whole lot of energy coming from you towards me, bruh. I don't know you. So yeah, I'm going to ask, yo, what kind of, you know, what y'all got popping? You know, when is the last time y'all were intimate? Yes, I see that wedding band on your finger. And yes, Liz said that we dated a while ago. I don't know what the hell a while means. A while could have been last week. Hell, it could have been yesterday for all I know. So for David, like you said, to set the tone, to know what he's getting into, I'm not mad at the question at all. Like I said, we can talk about how David moves and, you know, we're going to get into all of that. But as it is right now, I'm not mad at the question. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was gotcha, a gotcha. I connected the fact that him bringing up the kids with Jason in front of his friends and then meeting my ex, bringing up when's the last time you guys kissed and been intimate, that that was an issue for him. The issue is trust. David has been hurt in the past and he's seen the relationships around him dissolve from his parents to his two marriages and infidelity in one of those marriages from everything that he's been saying. So David's real issue is trust and also the fact that he doesn't know how to communicate that issue. So to me, trust can either is, is either one or two ways. Either you start empty and that person pours into you and now you start to build up trust and you know it, and that takes time because you know, they're coming guarded. Or on the other side, you start full. I trust you. You can do whatever you want to. But every time you don't return a phone call, every time, you know, you're not where you say you're supposed to be, that level of trust goes down and down and down until there is nothing left. It's either one of those two. I know, I personally think that David, he is definitely empty and there's nothing that, you know, Liz can pour into because he's trying to control it. But not only is David's container empty, that damn thing is shattered. And he has not taken the steps to put it back together, meaning go to therapy, get some help, get some understanding as far as why, you know, you're you're you don't trust the way that you could or you should. You're not open to trusting. And in in fact, you're trying to control it. Like going back to when he was talking with um, Stacy and saying, hey, I need access to your um, social media accounts, all of those things. If you don't take the steps to fix it, you're going to end up in the situation like he is right now. How important is communication to you? Probably the most important thing in a relationship. I love a woman that's a safe place, no matter what I tell her. So do you feel like you're a safe place for her? Yes, I think I would be a safe place. What Clarence set that up masterfully, didn't he? He asked the right series of questions to not just get a theoretical baseline, but he, want, he got David to speak to say exactly what his thoughts and feelings were when it came to communication. And then once David said, okay, it is this, he then used David's own words to say, okay, well, if that's the case, why did you do this? That right there is, I mean, and the way he asked the questions as well was very calm, very direct. There was no ambiguity to it. There was no emotion added to it. It was simple, straight line, fact-based, um, establishing the facts in order to then move forward and make his point. She told you something in confidence. Okay. Kiss with somebody else. And she felt betrayed that you mentioned it in front of your friends. Mm -hmm. How do you feel explaining you being a safe place yeah. after doing that? Simple question, valid question. David's own concept of safe space. All right. There was no attack in the question. There was no negative energy outside of, you know, the tension that was there that was already there. Um, but, you know, he didn't come at David any kind of way. He was like, yo, you said it's this. You Now, if you say safe space is such and such, how is it that what you did regarding her establishes said safe space? It's a valid question. Like I said, a simple question that requires a simple answer. This is more so to Liz. If you told me, Dave, just going forward, I don't feel comfortable with certain things you may share, then I have to learn from you. So it's up to Liz to reinforce what he has already established as a safe place. The question is about him, his behavior, his violation of trust. 
However, it's up to Liz to make sure that things work right because she now has to come and have a conversation with him to make sure that he doesn't violate the safe place that he himself said is important because that's what is needed in a relationship. Yeah, that's that bullshit right there. Did you notice what her gestures suggested in the moment? No, no. Did it matter? It's not that it didn't matter. Knowing how I see you, knowing how I value you, Mm -hmm. and the platform that I put you on, you are solid to me. I'm if I ask a direct question, I expect a direct answer. It, that's normally how things work. Clarence asked a simple question, does it matter? He asked that question to David, so David then should answer, and think about it, it's a simple yes or no question. Did it matter? Yes. Did it matter? No. However, instead of David answering Clarence directly, he then starts to tap dance and do all this other stuff and, and talk about, well, it's not this. And, and instead of um, addressing Clarence, he then turns to Liz and tries to butter her up because right now he's looking for an ally. This whole conversation and you being here and her being here, I want to like just kind of bring down the strength in the room right now. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an alpha. I don't know how to be weak. So when his tactic of trying to get Liz on his side by throwing compliments at her and, you know, basically trying to get her to be his ally in that conversation, when all of that fails, what he then tries to do is what he always does, try to control the outcome. And in this case, he tries to end the conversation magnanimously. That doesn't work. But I will say this, y'all. Unless Clarence is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, I have never heard a man say I'm an alpha. An alpha is what an alpha is. There's no reason to say it. What is already understood doesn't have to be spoken. A lion does not walk into a room. And I've said this before on a couple of the reviews. A lion doesn't walk into a, into a room and say, hi, I'm lion. No, when a lion walks in, everybody in that room knows, God damn, that's a lion. It's already understood. So that's the only thing that I have to say about that. Back to David. David has exhibited the fact that he always wants to control situations. And because he has that low key way of talking, because, you know, he seems to be that quote unquote good guy. Ultimately, what this dude is, he wants to make sure that things are, are going his way. So what you see is a mess of a man who's got a little bit of Christianity seasoning that mess, but it's still a mess nonetheless. It's a smooth talker. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you want a seesaw of emotions. He know what to say to make you feel some type of way. Mm. This is my thing, though. If you're going to be one way with me in private and someone totally different in public, then how do I know who the real you is? I'm glad that Clarence was there for Liz because what he did was he helped her to understand and he reinforced what she already knows to be true. David is not ready for her and he is not ready to love. Um, you know, it, th that's the hard part about dating, especially when you're, you're dating with intention, is that someone that, you know, when you initially meet them, things seem right. Because we go all the way back to when David and Liz first met, they were singing gospel songs together. They definitely had a lot of things in common. The issue is, though, down the line, when you really get to know them and when their representative, you know, falls back, you see the real person and you realize that, yo, this is not the right person for me. And if I spend any time with them, I'm going to end up hurt and I'm going to waste my time. So mm -hmm. um, I invited you over because I think that it might be more insightful for you to meet someone um, that is an ex of mine. <laughs> uh, who says you say what? <laughs> someone that is an ex. Um, oh, wow. Kyra is the only one that told the, her dude, in this case, Jason, about meeting the ex before he met the ex. Once again, like I said, going beyond just the common courtesy of it, it gave Jason a chance to prepare. That means that he could ask Kyra questions about the ex. Yo, what's this dude like? You know, that kind of thing. You know, and also it gave him the chance to be like, you know what? Hey, I'm good. I don't really want to do this. If Jason wanted to leave, he could have. He wasn't just you know, didn't ring the doorbell and walk into a situation where, you know, she's on the couch and her ex is up on the screen or whatever. She gave Jason a chance to prepare for it because that is, like I said, just the right thing to do. You know, I always say that, you know, what men really want is peace. And there is no way you can get peace 
by actually inviting a man into a situation of low key conflict. Like I said, I'm not saying that all these dudes are going to just start fighting and, you know, like I said, the fisticuffs. I'm not saying that. But if I walk into a situation which is you got two men, so there is some hostility there. You know, it may be low key, but it's still there nonetheless. You cannot have peace in a state of hostility. Yeah, we can kind of work things out, you know, kind of like what we saw with Joel and David, where, you know, they were cool about it. But at the end of the day, when I walk in and, and it's a situation of hostility, the conflict, and you, the woman that I'm interested in, put me in that situation, that's not bringing peace to my life. You literally invited me in to conflict. Hey. <laughs> I up? love this jacket. Mm, I was going to wear it for today. Hi. How's it going? Nice this to meet you. This is Tony. Nice to meet you, Tony and Chris. Well, how y'all doing? Pretty so nice. I brought you here today to meet my ex. Oh, wow. Again, another situation where a man is walking into the unknown. It seems like a lot of women don't get this, and especially the women as we see, they don't understand how men think and how men feel. When a man walks into a situation and he sees his woman sitting across from another man that he does not know, alarm bells start start ringing. What's going on? What's that? But beyond that, okay, beyond that, most, and let's go back to what, I, what we were talking about earlier, which is, you know, to protect and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. What you have here and most men, what we do when we get into a restaurant or when we get into a situation like that, we sit with our backs to a wall, just like you see here, and I'm able to see everything that's going on. And that way I can protect you. I can defend you from things because I see it. But if I walk into a situation and now I have to sit with my back to the open window. I can't defend you. That's one. Number two is if I walk into a situation and there's already a man sitting in the position of power, meaning he is in the position to protect you, to defend you. He has that position of power. And as a man, supposedly your man, I either have to, hey, dog, can you move over? And now I'm sitting beside this dude that I don't know. Remember, none of these from Chris to Ron, they don't know the other dude. But now I either have to because I want to sit with my back to the wall. I got to sit next to this dude. All right. Or I can be like, hey, let's switch places. And at that point, once again, I don't know this dude. It now becomes awkward or what hap what we've seen happen each time, not necessarily when they're in their homes, per se, but when they're in an open space in a restaurant. What happens is the guy comes in and now he has to sit next to the woman with his back to the um to the wind to the to the um entrance. Once again, that as a man, there's just something about not knowing what's behind me that I there are times I've actually positioned my chair in such a way that I can see what the hell's going on because that's just that's just how I'm built. I don't know. So that's why I'm saying it's dangerous, not just because you don't know the guy, but when you're walking in, this man is already sitting in what is arguably your position. And now you got to fall in line because this person has already taken the dominant position. It, it, you see it. The women don't recognize that for what it is, but men and y'all fellas, if if you agree with me on this one, let me know. But it's, it's something about it that it's like, OK, what's going on? The woman's like, hey, have a seat. But a man is like, nah, OK, where am I going to sit? How am I going to sit? How am I not going to create a scene here, but still maintain some kind of, you know, just discipline when it comes to stuff like that? It's, it's, it's not a good look for any of the dudes when they walk into it like that. I'm ready to settle down. So far as the journey is considered, I'm looking for a wife. Dope. Dope. Yeah. All right, so how does she handle stressful situations? I say for sure, like, she's not one of those perfect people that let things go. If we had a problem, would you let it linger with us too? Just like when they met the family or the friends or whatever the last, the last couple episodes, the same thing goes here. These interviews slash interrogations aren't just meant to be one way. It should be a two-way thing. And I appreciate the fact that Jason is like, yo, so tell me about this aspect of Kyra. Tell me about that. Once again, I get it that, you know, the, the ex in this case knows Kyra from when they were together. And if you recall, Kyra was talking about going to therapy and, you know, doing certain things. So she's not the same woman that she was when they were together. 
But being that as it may, the fact is Jason is still trying to get some information about Kyra from the person that knows her better than he does. That's what you should do. Not just, you know, sit back and let that person ask you all these damn questions. But you say, you say hey, tell me something about it so that way you can gain some knowledge as well. I want to know, is Kyra financially responsible? She knows how much she has, but that's still different from having a budget and having a goal in mind that you want to carry to work to. You know what I'm okay. saying? I feel like you could show her some different techniques and y'all relationship, you may have to do that. Mm, okay. Sex, communication, finances. Those three things are important to all relationships if they want to succeed. I appreciate the fact that Jason is asking these important questions, these pertinent questions that really matter when it comes to the long term strength of, of you know, their potential relationship. When in the relationship, speaking of which, you know, you when you come together with somebody, you take on all aspects of that person, just like they take on all aspects of you. So things such as, you know, your credit score, things such as, you know, your how you are, uh, your financial responsibility, all of those things come into play. We know that um, Kyra is an attorney, so, you know, she's a potentially a high earner. But just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean that you know how to handle the money that you make. And there are a lot of people. Yeah, they got a lot of money coming in, but they in turn got a lot of money coming out. So I like the fact that Jason is trying to gauge where she is based on um, the time that she was with her ex. When we were together, I came out. I'm interested in guys, so I also <laughs> like guys. <laughs> and so she was literally taking back and so we had a conversation about it wow i'll say it again dangerous i get it today more people are more accepting of the lgbtq members of our society and it's not a big deal however there are plenty of people out there that do not like gay lesbian homosexuals however you want to put it they don't like that kind of stuff so you know of course chris is cool with it not a problem but you don't know how Chris may have reacted or what he may have said. Be like, yo, you know, anything could have happened in that situation. So that's what I'm saying. It's not necessarily, you know, when I say it's a dangerous thing, it's not just dangerous for the, the guy that's walking in, you know, being ambushed. It could be potentially dangerous for the person sitting across from him because anything could have happened in this situation regarding Chris and Tony. Also, y'all, if I missed a letter in LGBTQ, I, I, I it, trust me, wasn't intentional. I love who, hey, you love who you love, got no issues. Like I said, my bad. This is called a smooth persuasion right here. <laughs> why, why are you that, laughing at that? Because that sounds like somebody I know. I'm really scared of AJ, to be quite honest, because I'm very fearful that he's going to break my heart. I definitely like him, but he doesn't make me feel very secure in our relationship. But he sits next to me, and there goes the butterflies. What relationship? Man, that's like putting the cart way before the horse. I mean, they're essentially dating, getting to know each other right now, right? Uh, once again, this reinforces what I've been saying about her wanting to, her needing to be number one. You know, it's it's she needs that reassurance that, hey, I'm, the, I'm gonna be the number one. That way it seems like you won't leave. That's how it's coming across. You know, they're not in a relationship. They're literally dating, getting to know each other. And I mean, even AJ, um, AJ just said that, hey, I haven't talked to her, you know, haven't dealt, you know, developed anything. So it's like she is looking for something way before it even gets to that point. Ron chose me. Hey, girl. <laughs> I'm a different guy than Ron. If she feels more safe and consistent and all these other things that she has over there with him that she doesn't have with me, then it seems like she made a choice. But the very fact that she's here on this date, mm, I'm not so sure. Red flags and all, even as something as important as her faith, all that doesn't matter because, hey, he chose me and therefore I chose him. That's, that's like I said, that's a red flag. But AJ recognizes something that I've been saying as well in some previous reviews, which is the person that's there in front of you, you're going to make sure that you leave a mark on that person, indelible. Hey, you with me? That's all you can think about. And that's what you have to do, regardless of, you know, if you're their number one and all this other nonsense. So it's like, what do I do? Nephew Tommy said, come here and pick something that you don't ordinarily do. And then I did that. But then, like, I'm still feeling AJ. I need for you to make a decision about what you want. I'm not willing to be second choice. It's not about being the best choice. It's about being the best and only option for him. What has she done or what has she shown to say, you know, to make these men be like, yo, 
I want her to be in my life, not just, eh, you know what, between them, I'll choose Alexis. That's not what you want. We've talked about this in, in previous um re in previous reviews that I've done that he who finds a wife. In other words, a man just doesn't choose a random woman and makes her his, his wife. He finds a woman that is already his wife. What has Alexis done or you know, to be the, to be Ron's wife. What is it that Ron wants in a woman that's his wife? What has Alexis done to be AJ's wife? What is it that AJ wants in, in his wife? What are the things that matter to him? We haven't seen that. And once again, of course, this is that reality show. They probably had, they may have had these conversations. We don't know. So, but those are the things that matter. What we've seen is Alexis fixating on being chosen number one and all this as opposed to being number one, either for Ron or being number one for AJ. What I'm looking for is a person that made a decision in their heart, just as much as I made the decision. I know I'm good enough. I'm, I know I'm all that in a bag of chicks. Yeah. chips. I don't need you to tell me Can that. Can I shut you up real fast? Oh my goodness. Oh. Hey, come here. Oh, hey! Hey! Yeah, that kiss is cool and all. And yes, she is good enough. Yes, she is all that. However, is she what these men want? Is she what Ron wants? Is she what AJ wants? That's the question. And I will say this. Us dudes, we know what we want. And AJ, he wants Kyra, okay? He wanted her from the very first time he saw her again when they re-met at the first episode after, you know, they'd, they'd been on dates before. He wants Kyra. Now, is he... Is he being disingenuous when he says that he wants to pursue Alexis? I don't think so. I think that he is open to that as well. But ultimately, who he wants to be with is Kyra. After experiencing that ex-date and hearing some of the things that he was saying, I wanted him to come in to tell him a little bit more of how I feel. No sleep to daylight, homie. Hey. Uh -huh. How are you? How are you? How you doing? I'm good. I was sick. Good, good, good. So David and Ron are in the hot seat this week. Y'all, at this point, we're in uh, season four and everybody on the show and not just us watching it, not just us fans who see what's going on. Everybody on the show, they know when it's elimination time. And you can see that because when Ron came in, his energy was like, all right, I know what this is. Let's let's get this thing going. So <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a foregone conclusion. But like I said, right now we got Ron and David. They're up in the hot seat for elimination this week. Divine masculine, you don't know how long I've had that in, on a daily basis. Wow. Okay. Dismissing prayer at that time was a little offensive to Alexis because it has worked for her in the past. You know, you do what works for you, I do what works for me. You can stay here and pray for me, but I'm out the door handling the situation. Remember when I said that Ron's don't give a damn meter has been tacked all the way out? It shows right now. Like I said, he's there. He knows what time it is. He knows that it's elimination time. And, you know, he may be one of the dudes that's leaving. Now, I like the fact that Ron knows who he is. And yes, he does walk in, in his divine masculinity. It's true. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. He is an action oriented man who makes his own decisions and he's not led by, you know, faith in Christianity. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. He is who he is. And if that doesn't align with Alexis and what she's looking for, then honestly, so be it. I mean, it may sound callous. It may sound wrong, but Honestly, that's what you want. And Ron is not the kind of dude from what we've seen that's going to change and, you know, change around from who he is, especially for Alexis, who wants him. Well, let me not say that because she hasn't asked him to make any kinds of changes, but he hasn't said, yo, Alexis, I want you and all of this, nor has she become the kind of woman from what we've seen that he really wants. I hadn't really talked to Liz since the date with the ex-boyfriend. And so I'm ready to just kind of share my feelings, my thoughts, and really uncover some things. Um, I want to leave. I want to share with you. I want to leave. No, I want to. No, 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 let no. me, let no, me, no, Liz. No. See, because I, I would... it's been a long time. No, but I and prefer. I need to talk no. to you because. Liz, me... Liz. So let me get this straight. David, the same dude that says he values communication, how important all, all that is, has not spoken to her since the date with um, her and her ex. So, in fact, we, now, don't get me wrong. We don't know exactly how much time has passed. It could have been a day, could have been three days. We don't know. But what we do know is that in between when Liz went out with David and met up with the ex, 
Liz also went out on another date with Jason. So enough time has passed to where he could have picked up the phone and be like, hey, I know we just had a really intense you know, meeting and how all of that went down. But I just want to say this. I just want to say that. I just want to say all of the things that he's now hell bent on trying to express that he hasn't said prior to. You know, you've been very consistent. And honestly, for me, it has been you. You were my number one. And I was happy because it was like a man chose me. That, that kind of rubbed me off the wrong way. Mm. For you to say you were interested because I picked you, it was almost like you were looking for validation. But wait. I got to say, I agree with the dude. I've been saying that she wants to be chosen as opposed to presenting herself as being the only choice because she is exactly what these men are looking for. Remember, each man obviously is looking for something different, but instead of her being, you know, getting to know the men and not necessarily changing who she is in order to be something for somebody, but being the kind of man with the qualities and traits that they are looking for so that they can come together. She hasn't done that. Instead, she's like, hey, I'm out your number one. I need, you know, I should be your number one, uh, all of that stuff. And that is a turnoff. I can see that. And also Ron has kind of been consistent when it comes to that, because even when Chrysanthemum uh, kept asking him, hey, am I your number one back when they were salsa dancing? He's like, yo, can you, instead of worrying about being my number one, can you just be my dance partner right now, right here in this moment? That's a turnoff when somebody wants to be this, wants to be that, instead of just wanting to be with you, and then we learn each other and build together. I wanted you here so yeah, I could express it. Yeah, and I wanted it. you here too. I, I wanted you here so, so I could I share some things with you. Ash, I Liz, too. I wanted to express some things. You didn't let me Spanish Liz, talk Liz, because Liz, I started Liz. to talk. Liz, I would love on. for it, David, right. for We're you to We're not getting me nowhere. Finish. You interrupted listen, me listen. when I was trying to talk. Right. So, Liz, will fair. you allow me to do that? Well, uh, will you allow me to speak? Right. You are a gentleman, come right? Come, come, come. Well, I tell you what, Liz is a very patient woman. I mean, she tried every tactic possible to get David to talk. I mean, she's like, hey, you're a gentleman. You're the She did everything she could. But David, once again, is trying to control, you know, how things go, because honestly, the dude knows his 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 um, fate is sealed because if even if he doesn't get eliminated, because honestly, none of the guys were eliminated. Ron wasn't eliminated, nor was David, because they're going to continue this in the next episode. However, David knows that regardless, even if he stays on the show, he has no other connections outside of Liz. And actually, the same goes for Ron. Outside of Alexis, there really aren't any other connections that he has with any of the other women. So at the end of the day, even if one of them leave or both of them right now, it's a wrap, you know, unless Ron can do something and, and maybe form a relationship instantly with somebody else or and I damn sure don't see that happening with David. Both of these men, if they don't leave in the next episode, um, they're going to be gone relatively soon. So with all that being said and done, this was this. As you see, this is probably one of my longer reviews because there was a lot of stuff to unpack, not just when it comes to men and women, men, men and women and how we move, how we see things. But as a whole, just when it comes to just relationships, y'all, y'all know I love this show because it showcases black love and just the whole dating process and the things that we see in a very abbreviated fashion. It's not necessarily the traditional route, but it's good to see. And I love seeing us on that screen, you know, whether I agree with how somebody's moving, I just love to see it. So as always, y'all, I appreciate you being there. In the meantime, please make sure you follow me on social media. Facebook and Instagram. It's at author Christopher Markland. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, it's going to be at author underscore Chris M. I really enjoy y'all being here. I appreciate the comments. I know I cannot wait to hear what y'all got to say about this one because this, like I said, was a hell of an episode. It was a lot to unpack and I really appreciate y'all. Um, as always, y'all stay determined. Y'all have a good one.